hello everyone welcome to 28th lecture of the course which is the last lecture of the course in the previous lecture we summed up some part of the discussion that we had in this course and in today's lecture we we'll sum up the rest of the things and also we'll recapitulate the exercises that we did in this course so we are going to sum up the remaining part of the lectures so we saw that the role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence isn't it so we could see that coexistence is central to this existence and all that we need to do is to understand it and live accordingly isn't it and to make it more expressive we say that coexistence harmony and relationship has to be understood and to be lived accordingly so we can say that the role of human being in this whole existence is just to understand the coexistence harmony and relationship and to live accordingly and this is what is going to be described in the following slides so we could see human conduct in its completeness as we discussed one formulation of the human conduct the second formulation if you remember we talked about value policy and character and the first formulation we looked at the activities of the self and tried to look at the role of human being based on right understanding right feeling and right thought so we can see that on one end we are able to realize the whole existence as coexistence when we are able to see the submergence of nature in space and this organizes all the activities in the self so we can see so we can see in the diagram here how the harmony flows in the self isn't it so based on realization the authentication gets complete and then the understanding gets complete and it is followed by the completeness of other activities in the self and thus there is activity completeness in the self and this reflects as behavior work and participation and when it goes as an expression outside we are able to participate in the universal human order making the human tradition so this is the complete meaning of human conduct so presently we can see that we have not been able to realize coexistence and hence we are not able to live accordingly so what do we do now so to address this particular need we took up exercises in our course so we have been trying to work on this particular thing in our course uhv3 so to understand what to do as a human being we went through lectures 1 to 28 and then we did some practice through exercises 1 and 2 so we had practice sessions 1 to 14 and now we can recall that this is what we have been trying to work upon in exercises 1 and 2 and this is what is preparing our base for exercise 3 now if you look at the conduct when we are ascending from lower to the higher activities of the self one starts from expectation isn't it and in expectation one starts from selecting goes to testing and then one is able to develop analyzing then comparing and then imaging and here comes the transformation when we are able to enter block b1 isn't it so this is the transformation that takes place in the self and then we are able to awaken to the higher activities of contemplation understanding determination authentication realization and when the realization takes place we are able to see the submergence of the whole nature in space so the previous diagram that you saw was the conduct when the activity completeness has taken place all the activities of the self are activated are awakened but when we are going to develop the self through our study through our practice then this is the process that we have to go through isn't it so earlier we move from bottom to top and when the realization is ensured then we move from top to bottom so both the processes have to be understood isn't it so when the realization is there then based on realization all the activities get complete and there is continuity of happiness in the self and there is conduct completeness of the self also but in the present state we have to work to develop the higher activities of the self isn't it so how to proceed for contemplation of relationship how to enter block b1 okay and this is where we have to work because ultimately unless we are able to contemplate upon the right feeling we are preconditioned multiple ways we are instilled by sensation and that's how there is no continuity of happiness in the self so through lectures 1 to 28 we have been able to develop the understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence and for that only we detailed upon the activities of the self we detailed upon the existence we detailed upon all the orders in nature and thus we have this clarity at least at the level of expectation thought and even desire we have this clarity 
so now how do we see it experientially how do we see it through direct observation and this is what we are trying to do through our practice sessions 1 to 24 through exercises 1 and 2 and later on through exercise 3 but in this course we have limited ourselves to exercises 1 and 2 So, if you look at the program of action at the level of individual, there are three programs. One is self-exploration. The second is self-awareness, and the third is self-evaluation. So, self-exploration essentially means that the proposal is there in front of us. We start verifying the proposals. We try, start experientially validating them in our living, isn't it? So, we have the understanding of coexistence. At least we have the clarity at the level of thought. We have the feeling and thought of coexistence. and then our behavior work and participation get in line with this on in the larger order on the basis of understanding of coexistence harmony and relationship so this is something that we have been trying to do at a personal level now with this we have a self awareness we are able to be aware of our desire thought and expectation every moment and when we have this awareness then we are able to evaluate our desire thought and expectation on the basis of our natural acceptance and that is to say on the basis of relationship harmony and coexistence and this is something that we can do every moment so if you look at the program of action at the individual level so one program is self exploration then it is self awareness and then self evaluation so there are three things to be accomplished at the level of individual now when it comes to self exploration so the proposal is there in front of us and we need to verify the proposals experientially validate the proposals so that it becomes a part of our understanding so through verification we are able to understand coexistence or at least have the clarity at the level of thought and then we are able to ensure the feeling and thought of coexistence and our behavior work and participation is largely based on understanding of coexistence harmony and relationship so this is something that we are trying to do through this course also and when we are into this process of self exploration so we are able to be aware of our desire thought and expectation and this is something that we have been trying to do through our exercises 1 and 2 and this can be done every moment so every moment we need to be aware of our desire thought and expectation and when the proposal is there in front of us we are able to explore the proposal and we are also able to be aware of our desire thought and expectation so what will follow is self evaluation so based on the right proposal we are able to evaluate our desire thought and expectation on the basis of our natural acceptance that is to say on the basis of relationship harmony and coexistence and this is also something which can be done every moment and through this the transformation takes place in our sanskar and sanskar is the acceptance is all our desires thought and expectations summed up together and through this process of exploration we are able to transform our sanskar basically if you look at the transformation in the sanskar so sanskar at the previous moment the environment as the previous moment and the self exploration that we do at the previous moment makes our next sanskar so this is the way the transformation takes place in our sanskar and this is what we need to do so this is the program of action at the individual level so looking at the program of action at the individual level which enables our self evolution so we might be presently in this state and from here we have to transform ourselves to this state so that all the activities of the self get awakened so with the purpose of self evolution there is awakening to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization and thus there is purification of sanskar so the acceptances that we have accumulated at the level of our block b2 in our desire thought and expectation get purified in the process so working for self development through the practice sessions we have been doing exercises 1 and 2 and this is something that we'll try to look at again in the lecture so exercises 1 and 2 we have been doing and we are doing these exercises for developing ourselves we are able to develop the understanding and we are also able to purify our accumulated desire thought and expectation our accumulated sanskar in the process so we have seen that our target is to live with continuous fulfillment and to live with continuous fulfillment we are doing these exercises now we have studied in uhv1 and 2 and we are also doing this investigation in uhv3 that the basic human desire is continuity of happiness and we had concluded that in order to ensure continuity of happiness we have to ensure right understanding in the self right feeling and right thought in the self 
and also ensure competence or right living with the world outside in our mutual interactions with be the interaction with the human being or the rest of nature now right understanding would mean that we are able to see the complete reality starting from self to the entire existence that we are able to see the material as well as consciousness in submerged in space that is we are able to see the material units as well as the consciousness units submerged in space and this is something to be accomplished in the self by the self we had also seen that right feeling and right thought of relationship harmony and coexistence is to be ensured in the self and when it comes to develop the competence or right living so we have to ensure our living in relationship harmony and coexistence with the world outside so with that when you go to interact with the human being or the rest of nature or we are going to participate in the larger order we are able to ensure mutual fulfillment so with human being we are able to ensure mutual happiness and with the nature we are able to ensure mutual prosperity and when it comes to participate in the entire nature we are able to fulfill the human goal so this is something to be accomplished in terms of competence so our focus in these exercises is, has been on the self this is something that we have been saying again and again so our major focus therefore is on ensuring the right understanding right feeling and right thought so to live with fulfillment we need to understand and to understand we need to see that is observe and to see we need to pay attention to be mindful so you can recall how we have been trying to be mindful in our exercises and we have been trying to pay attention to the reality so we tend to make mistakes in living with a reality that we do not understand for example we tend to make mistakes in living in relationship if we do not understand the relationship and you can see that there are two important aspects while paying attention one is the object of paying attention and the second is the process of paying attention and the first one is the object of attention and the second one is the process of paying attention and you could see that this object of attention is very important isn't it so these are the two important aspects now if you look at the object of attention whatever is to be understood that is to be lived with so the entire existence is our object of attention and if you look at the process of paying attention so we have to be aware and we have to also evaluate without reacting if we react then we are not able to evaluate rightly isn't it so to begin with we have to be aware first and when we are able to be aware then we start evaluating and then we also start looking into the feeling which is naturally acceptable to us so that those feelings are ensured in the self so what is to be understood so three things to be understood as we had discussed consciousness that is self material and to begin with we can start from the body and then coexistence so by way of the following exercises we are able to observe the reality so in exercise 1 we are trying to understand the consciousness that is the self is observing the self in exercise 2 we are trying to understand the material that is the self is observing the body the material and we briefly touched upon exercise 3 when we looked at the seventh step of exercise 2 and essentially we are trying to pay attention to the coexistence the submergence here now existence is units submerged in space so space is there units are there and units are of two kinds the material units and the consciousness units the material unit one example is body if you look at the consciousness unit the self is there and the coexistence is there space is there so exercise 1 is focused on observing the self exercise 2 is focused on observing the material that is the body and in exercise 3 which we did not do and we are just trying to touch upon this we try to observe the distance between two units we try to look at the relationship between two units and that's how we start paying attention to the coexistence so who is the seer that is the observer so self is the seer not the eyes the eyes are only an instrument they are a part of the body so the self is the seer the observer the body let's say eyes are only used as an instrument as and when required so the instrument is not also required every moment the instrument is required from time to time isn't it and this is something that we have been able to observe through our practice sessions so to see that is to observe we have these three exercises one seeing the self by the self to seeing the body by the self and three seeing the coexistence by the self so in exercise 1 the consciousness is observing the consciousness 
in exercise 2 the consciousness is observing the material and in exercise 3 the consciousness is observing the coexistence and to begin with it is observing the distance between two units and then the relationship between two units so the two units could be the self and the body isn't it so as you could see that self is not a part of the body body is also not a part of the self and self is there at a distance from the body so we start with observing the distance between the self and the body and then we go on to see the relationship between self and the body now there are two possibilities one is living within and one is living with the world outside so normally we are caught up in the world outside and we keep on paying attention to the things outside and then we are carried away by the assumptions about relationship and then we recognize accordingly and fulfill accordingly so this may be the general case isn't it and then we are applying the power of the self somewhere outward from there we have to come inward from there we have to come inside now going inward would mean that we are trying to look within in the self and then we are trying to work for knowing isn't it so that the assuming is self right and with this competence we are able to interact with the world outside so the right sequence would be that we are able to see within first then in relationship outside and when this happens the knowing guides the assuming based on which there is recognizing and fulfilling so we need to apply the power of the self inward so we start paying attention inward and when we have this competence that we are able to see whatever is there inward whatever is there in my imagination in my natural acceptance then i am able to participate with the outer world and this attention inward and with that we are able to pay attention outward as and when required so this is the way the transformation starts so the attention was outward earlier we started paying attention inward when we have the clarity inside then with that clarity we are able to participate with the outside world now talking about exercise one so we are observing the self by the self we are trying to look within and as we had mentioned earlier also that this is one way and not the only way to observe the reality so the steps mentioned in this exercise are one possible set of steps and not the only set of steps isn't it so for these observations do we need to use the eyes to see the self no we don't need to use the eyes do we need to take any work from the body no we don't need to take any work from the body so we can give rest to the eyes and the body we can keep them in some comfortable position and then we can start observing ourselves and these are the seven steps that we looked at while we are doing exercise one and this is something to be done every moment so in the first step we are trying to be aware we are trying to observe our imagination at this moment that the desire thought and expectation and desire essentially means the feeling part and we saw that if you are not able to see the feeling straight away then you can look at the thought and from there you can deduce what was there in your feeling and one important thing that we said in step one is that you just have to observe okay you don't have to react you don't have to feel upset you don't have to change or modify or impose any kind of thought upon you any kind of feeling upon you you just have to observe you just have to observe in second step we are asking ourselves whether the feeling that we have at this moment is naturally acceptable to us or not and do we want its continuity so this is something that we are trying to refer to our natural acceptance and here we are saying that just observe and here we are also trying to evaluate in step 1 we are not trying to evaluate in step 2 we are trying to evaluate and without any reaction we are trying to evaluate in step 3 you can ask yourself whether you are comfortable you are in harmony happy with the feeling that you have at this moment and here again just observe and evaluate without any reaction in step four, we are saying that who decided the feeling that you have at this moment? Did you decide it or someone else or some situation outside decided it? So we could see that with some observation, we are able to say that it is me only who decides. But don't assume this, observe this straight away for you, observe this directly for you. Once you are clear that you are the one who is deciding, then you can ask yourself on what basis did you decide the feeling that you have at this moment? So did you decide this on the basis of understanding or on the basis of some assumption? So it may be the case that you are deciding for the feeling within you at this moment based on some assumption. So you start asking yourself, which feelings are naturally acceptable to you? 
फीलिंग्स ऑफ रिलेशनशिप और अपोजिशन हारमनी और डिसहारमनी को एक्सिस्टेंस और स्ट्रगल वॉट इज एक्सेप्टेबल टू यू नेचुरली एंड इफ फीलिंग्स ऑफ रिलेशनशिप हारमनी एंड कोगिस्टेंस आर नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेबल देन दे इज अ नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इज एंड सो वी टूक स्टेप टू इन टू स्टेप्स इन सिक्स ए वी आर आस्किंग आवर सेल्फ विच फीलिंग्स आर नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेबल टू अस एंड इन स्टेप सिक्स बी वी decide that if the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is naturally acceptable then there is a need to understand this isn't it and in step 7 we are saying that we need to ensure that the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is there in me all the time isn't it and we can see that when these feelings are ensured in us then we are in state of continuity of happiness and this is what is our basic desire so going from step 1 to step 7 we are trying to observe how by observing the reality and by evaluating ourselves we are able to ensure continuity of happiness within us so it is important to know that when i am able to understand the relationship harmony and coexistence in its completeness then i will be able to decide my feeling my thought accordingly and i will always be comfortable within i will always be comfortable with myself and when i am comfortable with myself i am happy within and when i am happy within i share the happiness outside when i am comfortable within i behave with others with comfort i work with comfort and then i am able to ensure mutual happiness and mutual prosperity and this is what we really want to be isn't it so this was a summary of all the steps that we went through in exercise 1 so there are some important observations about the steps of exercise 1 uh, something that i shared just now so in step 1 we have to be aware of the imagination our desire thought and expectation every moment and to have no reaction and this is something that can be termed as to observe with equanimity so without reacting without trying to stop them without trying to change them we are trying to observe our imagination and in particular we are trying to observe the feeling and you saw that this is a very simple but very important step because all our happiness or unhappiness is an outcome of this imagination isn't it in steps 2 and 3 we are trying to be aware as well as evaluate our desire that is our feeling so we are trying to see whether we are comfortable with the feeling or not whether it is naturally acceptable to us or not and step 4 we are trying to find out who is taking the decision and the conclusion is that i am taking the decision i am responsible and in step 5 we are trying to see the basis for our decision making whether it is understanding or assumption and we could conclude that understanding leads to definite and natural feeling ensuring happiness and this highlights the need for understanding so this is something that we are able to accomplish in step 5 in step 6a we are trying to ask whether opposition or relationship harmony or contradiction coexistence or struggle what is acceptable to us naturally and the conclusion is that what is acceptable naturally is the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence and then in step 6b we are trying to observe and understand the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence and we are able to conclude that understanding the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is basically understanding the whole existence so as you go to understand the coexistence we are able to see that the whole existence is coexistence and this completes our awakening to the activity of realization when you are able to see the whole existence as coexistence and the conclusion that comes out here is that this will ensure harmony and happiness at this moment every moment and in continuity so at every step we are able to conclude something so in essence what we are trying to do is seeing through direct observation that the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is acceptable to us naturally this is something that we concluded in step 6a and then we are trying to understand these feelings in step 6b and then we are trying to ensure that it continues in us in step 7 and this will ensure happiness and continuity in the self however we are able to accomplish step 6 and 7 when we are able to be aware of our imagination every moment that is step 1 which was the beginning of this exercise and we are able to see that we are the one who is taking the decision for my imagination that takes place at step 4 so all these steps are important isn't it but finally we have to be in the state of continuity of happiness and for that we have to ensure 
that we are able to see the relationship harmony and coexistence every moment very naturally so this was about exercise 1 so the most important thing is in step 1 we are trying to be aware every moment with no reaction with equanimity in step 6a we are observing and verifying that feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is acceptable naturally and in step 6b we are observing and understanding the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence through contemplation understanding and realization and in step 7 we are trying to ensure that our desire thought and expectation is always in line with our understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence and this ensures harmony and happiness every moment which is our ultimate goal so this is what we are doing in essence in exercise 1 in exercise 2 we are trying to observe that is see the body and the interaction between the self and the body and this way the consciousness is observing the material and this is again going to happen by the self and as we told earlier that this is just one way of observing the reality and not the only way so the self is there the body is there the two are coexisting the self is the consciousness the body is the material and there is no exchange of material here there is only exchange of information the self is sending instruction to the body and receiving sensation from the body and this is the transaction in the self and the body that is taking place now if you look at the steps of exercise 2 so in step 1 we are observing that you are there through your imagination and the body is also there which you are able to observe through your sensation and the self and the body are two distinct realities in step 2 we are saying that you have to observe the interaction you have with the body so observe that you give instruction to the body and receive sensation from the body from time to time as and when required in step 3 we have to observe who makes the decisions about what instructions are to be passed on to the body and what sensations are to be read from the body and then you are able to see that it is the self which is giving the instructions and also deciding what sensations to be read from the body so in step 4 we are saying that you have to find out are you in the sensation or are you at a distance from the sensation what is there so observing this thing you are able to conclude that you are not the sensation you are also not in the sensation but rather you are at a distance from the sensation but again this is not to be assumed but verified by oneself observed by oneself in step 5 we are saying that you have to observe that interaction with the world outside is by way of sensation and you have to observe that it is you who associates a meaning to the sensation so in step 6 we are saying that you observe how you associate the meaning to the sensation observe the role of your sanskar in it so observe your reaction when you associate the meaning based on assumption and observe your response when you associate the meaning based on understanding right understanding in step 7 we are trying to see the coexistence we are trying to see that i am there in space the body is there in space and i am interacting with the body through space so these are the seven steps of exercise 2 so there are some important observations about the steps of exercise 2 so the details are going to follow but we can make some important observations here So in step 1 we are observing the self through the imagination and the body through sensation and we are able to see that the self and the body are two distinct realities in step 2 and 3 we are observing the interaction between the self and the body and we are able to see that it is the self which is sending the instruction to the body and the body is sending sensations to the self so in essence if you see in steps 1 2 and 3 we are able to see that the self and the body are two distinct realities and there is transaction of information only the self is giving instruction to the body and reading sensations from the body there is no material transaction here and the decision is every time taken by the self in step 4 and 7 we can feel that the self is at a distance from the sensation there is a distance between the self and the body the self is in space the body is also in space the transaction of information between the self and the body also takes place through space in step 5 and 6 the interaction of the self with the body or the world outside is by way of sensation this is something that we can observe and it is the self who associates the meaning to the sensation is influenced or remains uninfluenced decides for response based on the sanskar depending on sanskar the self responds or reacts isn't it 
So in essence, you can see that there are two major things to be observed here. In steps one, two, three, four, and seven, we are able to see that the self and the body are two distinct realities in space and they are at a distance. And both the way, the transaction of information only through space and the decision is taken every time by the self. In step five and six, we can see that the interaction of the self with the body or the world outside is by way of sensation. It is the self who associates the meaning to the sensation and is influenced or not influenced depending on the sanskar. So what we see under A is something that remains with me as a part of my understanding. But if you look at B, here we are able to evaluate the sanskar because the meaning that I'm associating to the sensation is based on my sanskar. And this I keep on evaluating, this I keep on observing within me. So we have to keep working on step five intensively whenever we are interacting with the body or with the world outside. And we have seen that many people have experienced that they are able to see their sanskar much better through this step five than through exercise one. Because many times we are influenced by the sensations from the body and that triggers our deep preconditionings. So while doing exercise two, you are able to relate yourself to exercise one also. And this dependence on the body for happiness through sensation is a major obstacle in our development. And this is something that we are able to observe how we are, how we are associating the meaning to the sensation that we are getting from the body. So this is something that we had detailed upon. So there are events taking place outside and there are some physiochemical changes or some behavior of the other human being and it has an effect on the body. And this is something which is happening in the self, isn't it? And we take the sensation, we associate the meaning and whether we are influenced or not, that decides whether we react or respond and then we decide how to express through the body and then the body acts accordingly. So this is something that we had seen in step five. So we could see that either it is the behavior of the other human being or some physical facility and it has an influence on the body and it causes sensation in the body and the self reads the sensation that it considers important and then it associates the meaning and then decides what to do based on the understanding or assumption whether it responds or reacts and then it passes the instruction to the body as and when required. Now this is step seven. If you see here, we are taking a shift. We are trying to observe our being in space. So what we are saying here that I am in coexistence in space. The body is also in coexistence being in space. I transact information with the body through space as and when required. And that is dependent on my choice, my decision. So I send instructions to the body through space and read specific sensations from the body through space. So the outside objects have an effect on the body and these effects reach to me in the form of sensations taking place in the body. I observe this directly and while I interact with the body from time to time as and when I decide to do, my being is not dependent. So this is an important thing that I am there. My being is not dependent on the body. It is not dependent on the sensation also. It is not dependent on anything outside also. I am in space. Now through this observation also we can see that if my being is not there on anything outside me, so I am there all the time, isn't it? I am there in space. So I am there, I am related to all, but not dependent. I am responsible towards all. Now when I able to see that I am related to all, this ensures the feeling of love in me. And when I am able to see that I am responsible to all, this ensures the feeling of compassion in me. And you see that in step seven here in exercise two, we are observing certain things which will help us observe the coexistence when you go to do exercise three. So this is the evolution, the self-development that we had been talking about. And there are five steps here. I will not detail upon them. We had discussed about the self-exploration, the self-evolution. And what is desirable is this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness. So what we are ultimately working on, if you see, in essence, what we are doing is through exercise one, we are working to achieve a state of self where I am with awareness of all the activities of the self, particularly my imagination, that is my feeling to begin with every moment without any reaction with equanimity. 
and then i am observing and verifying that feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is acceptable to me naturally every moment and then i am observing and understanding the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence so i am able to awaken myself to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization in this process so i am ensuring that all my desires my thoughts my expectation are in line with relationship harmony and coexistence and we are able to ensure at, at this moment and we are trying to ensure it every moment and this ensures continuity of happiness in me isn't it so all this put together it ensures that i am in a state of continuous happiness the self is there in the state of continuous happiness isn't it and with this state of the self of harmony and continuous happiness now through exercise 2 we are able to see that the self and the body are two distinct realities they are in space they are at a distance and they are transacting information there is no material transaction here and they are in transacting information through space and the decisions are being taken by the self isn't it so in step 1 2 3 4 and 7 we are able to see that the self and the body are two distinct realities and they are only transacting information the interaction of the self with the body or the world outside is by way of sensation it is the self who associates the meaning to the sensation is influenced or remains uninfluenced and decides for the response based on the sanskar and depending on the sanskar the self reacts or responds so this is something that we are trying to do in step 5 and 6 and through this observation we are able to ensure that while i am interacting with the body or the world outside not only that i remain in a state of harmony and happiness but i am able to respond and not react with the world outside so we have been talking about the feeling of trust respect but still we find that many times we do react in relationship so through this direct observation we are able to ensure the right feeling in us we are also able to see that many times we become unhappy because of some sensation from the body because we associate some meaning based on our sanskar so essentially if you see through exercises 1 and 2 we are trying to intensively transform the self we are trying to activate the activities of block b1 so this is what we really want to do this is what we really need to do so now we'll have some assignment so the points for self evaluation here are that you list out your understanding emerging out of exercises 1 and 2 what did you conclude here how many steps are you able to see in yourself clearly are you able to see that happiness is your innate nature your natural characteristic it is not some influence from outside and how clearly you are able to see this so if you can see that happiness is your innate nature your natural characteristic then what is your program to ensure it so how much of this program is for trying to get favorable effect some sensation some feeling from outside even now and how much of this program is keeping in focus the self and how much of this program is keeping in focus the body so this is something that you can evaluate for yourself and the next thing that we are saying that what you can see as your commitment now how much time can you devote for developing the right understanding right feeling in the self how much time can you devote for social responsibility emerging out of natural self expression along with your present commitments so at least we can devote 2 hours for each of these so whether you can devote 2 hours every day for ensuring the right understanding right feeling within you and also to participate with the society in terms of ensuring right understanding right feeling in the society so the homework is that you continue with exercises 1 and 2 maybe the course will come to an end but you are going to continue with these exercises key of exercise 1 is the step 1 although it is very simple but very important step and try practicing it every moment practice step 7 of exercise 2 it is the entry point for exercise 3 to experience the coexistence in this existence so we come to the conclusion of the course now so it has been a happy journey for me sharing this content with you and i hope you are going to continue with exercises 1 and 2 you are also going to practice step 7 of exercise 2 so that you are prepared for exercise 3 so today we summed up the whole course so if you remember in the previous lecture we summed up one part of the course and today we summed up the rest of the lectures and we also uh, looked at the two exercises 1 and 2 briefly we try to recap all the steps that we have covered in our practice exercises and i hope this has been quite beneficial to you and you are going to practice exercise 1 and 2 and you are going to continue with exercises 1 and 2 because this is something that will help you transform
and as we can see that it is essentially the continuity of happiness that we all are striving for and i hope this course has been useful in fulfilling this need of yours thank you all